not for one person alone that we're in this movement for democracy. It's for all of us. From staunch opponent of military dictatorship to a leader of a regime accused of genocide, the fate of Aung San Suu Kyi lies yet again in the hands of the military junta. Born in Yangon in 1945, she's the daughter of one of the heroes of the country's war for independence. She was just two years old when her father was assassinated. She studied in India and at Oxford in England, where she settled with her family. In 1988, she returned to Yangon to care for her ailing mother. And it was then that she was swept up into politics, leading a pro-democracy movement in the midst of a brutal military repression. In 1989, she was placed under house arrest, refusing to leave the country in exchange for freedom. Two years later, she earned the Nobel Peace Prize for her activism. She was freed in November of 2010 and elected to parliament in 2012. We must seize the opportunity to reform the country. If we lose this opportunity, we'll go down in history as guilty. Her persistence paid off in 2015, when her party won the majority in legislative elections. The following year, she became state councillor, co-leading the country with the military. But her silence over the persecution of the Rohingya minority stoked widespread international criticism. In 2017, some 700,000 Rohingya refugees were forced to flee to Bangladesh amid claims of ethnic cleansing, accusations Aung San Suu Kyi denied. Periodically, trouble has broken out there between the Muslim community and the Rakhine community. And we have inherited this very complex problem and we have to deal with it. But her reputation in Myanmar went unscathed. Last November, her party secured yet another sweeping victory in parliamentary elections, prolonging Aung San Suu Kyi's mandate until the military junta seized power on February 1st.